<clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the December 2023 OSCC meetup. My name is Robert and join with Don, Dick, and the rest of you all to uh, kick us off for our final meeting of the year. Next slide. Our agenda is, well, welcoming our open source spotlight and then the catch up. Our spotlight this week, or this month, excuse me, um, is Aram. No, I'm not going to even try to destroy your last name, but Aram is um, a full time open source developer. So, uh, Aram, welcome. Hi. And I think at this point, we're going to switch slides and Aram's going to share. All right. So, just a sec. Cool. Uh, do you see my slides okay? Y yes, sir. Perfect. Um, so, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Aram, uh, last name Brevikenin, by the way. Um, and uh, yeah, as mentioned, I'm a full-time open source developer. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about a subject that is near and dear to my heart, which is how to get uh, users for your open source projects. Um, so it is important for me to start by saying that uh, while I created and maintain several popular open source projects, I am by no means an expert on this subject. Um, I am happy to share with you like my uh, experiences and uh, like kind of share my story. Um, but uh, I'm guessing some people who are listening know much more about this subject than I do. And I'm looking forward to uh, like having you correct all the uh, things I butchered uh, uh, during the talk. I do ask that uh, if you have any questions, please write them down and save them for later. Uh, I have uh, like I, I left uh, some time for questions in the end. Um, so about me, um, as mentioned, I uh, work on open source full time. Uh, right now, I am the lead maintainer of a project I created a few years ago called Zellage. Um, Zellage is uh, an open source uh, a terminal workspace and multiplexer. But I am not going to talk a lot about Zellage today. Rather, I'm only going to use it as examples. Uh, because I mostly want to talk about the subject and talk to you as developers who might be interested in like finding out how to get users for your open source projects and how to build communities around them. Um, I started contributing to open source by contributing to other people's software, some from uh, small companies, some from bigger ones, some from just independent projects. Uh, and then I eventually branched out into kind of doing my own stuff. Um, I. I kind of prefer doing things this way. This is what I like about development. The, uh, the thing about like turning something from an idea into my head, in my head, into uh, a software and application that that is like exists in the real world and has users. This is kind of uh, wh why I develop. So, uh, since this is, talk is called the real full stack, then I want to kind of take a step back and uh, make sure we're all on the same page and see what we talk about when we talk about the traditional full stack. This is, of course, extremely simplified. I am missing a lot of things from this, di this diagram, I am aware, but I like kind of want uh, us all to get the basic idea. So when we talk about the full stack in a traditional way, we're talking on the one side about the front end uh, in a web application. This usually runs with the browser, talking about the user interface, uh, the user experience, how it feels to use the application, the graphics, and the product side of things. Then connected through an API, we have the back end. This usually runs on the server or these days in the cloud or Lambda functions or what have you. Uh, this contains the business logic, the data layer, and the DevOps, all the like uh, the CI and uh, the application, like the application infrastructure side of things. Um, when we are full stack developers, uh, then we kind of know that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. If I do both front end and back end, uh, the the two of them kind of complement each other. So. When, for example, on the back end, I want to 
um, like optimize a certain process uh, for greater performance, then if I also do the front end and know when this process is running, I can, for example, know that this process always 100% of the time runs concurrently with another process. So I know that I only need to optimize it so far and I don't need to waste my time like spending hours making it perfect. Um, this, this is something that I usually wouldn't have even been able to ask or know what to ask if I just did the backend and I would have spent like loads of time on it. What I feel is the real full stack uh, also includes the users. In my opinion, an application is a piece of software that provides value to users. So if no one uses our application, if even we don't use an application, don't use our application, then in my opinion, it is more of an intellectual exercise than an application. A bit of a controversial opinion. Um, I find that when users come into our app, then unexpected things happen. Users often don't understand our interface. They don't understand things that are obvious to us. They don't find the features that we want them to find. And of course, on the other hand, they find all the bugs that we ourselves did not find. If, as a real full stack developer, I also deal with the user engagement. I also deal with finding users for my application. I also deal with talking to them finding out about their problems, reading reviews, everything like that, then I kind of am able to direct my application development to different places to create features and concentrate on bugs that uh, I wouldn't have known needed to be concentrated on if I only did, did the front end and back end. If someone else does this for me, like, um, uh, like in the example with a traditional full stack, then often things fall between the cracks. It is very powerful and the hole here is much greater than, uh, 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 than just being, I am a developer, I just do like coding, I don't care about the other stuff. Um, so why should I care about this as a developer? As we mentioned, um, if an application like is just programmed and never run, then we don't like have all the things that the users bring into the application. Um, if the users challenge us to make an application better, to improve it. Um, but on the other hand, when we create open source software, uh, and this is the kind of open source software that we don't create inside of a company, but that we kind of do in our own time and put on our own GitHub, um, um, maybe collaborate with other people on, then we usually don't have the benefit of a marketing department or of a DevRel team. All of this is on us, and we kind of have to do it on our own. On the, other, on the other hand, I am very much aware that us developers are kind of not wired to think in this way. We kind of prefer to stay in our cave, program our application, optimize our algorithms, uh, write user paths, create beautiful UIs, uh, things of that sort. But I think, like with everything, if we step outside of this comfort zone, if we present our work, if we try to convince people to use our software in a respectful way, then we find that we can overcome this fear and we grow not only as developers and not only as creators, which is, in my opinion, what we are. We make something out of nothing. We bring an idea from the void into existence, but we grow also as people. We can improve ourselves and then uh, uh, and make it easier for us to climb the next hill. Uh, that is difficult for us. Um, all of this being said, let's say you have an idea and you want to create an uh, open source project about it, one that will have many users and a community in the future. Uh, how do you get started? As developers, we kind of have this instinct of jumping directly into the code, like starting to write stuff, prototyping, hacking, um, uh, try to see if our idea is feasible. I think this is kind of counterproductive because this kind of leads us to a place where the code leads us into what the application will be rather than uh, us coming with some vision and telling the code what to do. So I would advise starting there, taking a step back, thinking about our idea, 
thinking what we would like our application to be in the far, far future when it has many users uh, and it has a community around it. Here, I would like to give an example of Zellage and uh, how I went through this process a few years ago when I created it. So I am a terminal developer. I write all my code inside Vim. I spend almost all of my time inside the terminal. I hardly use desktop applications at all, and I go to the browser only when I have to. Um, I wanted to create an application for other people like me. Um, I wanted to create a sort of IDE maker for terminal developers, something that would turn your everyday tasks into an interactive multiplayer dashboard experience, an application that would allow us to take these dashboards, these workspaces, I like to call them, serialize their state into uh, uh, like a human readable configuration file, share it with other terminal developers, whether they use Vim like me or different editors, Emacs, Helix, Nano, what have you, and no matter what operating system they are on. I wanted to create something that is fun to use and easy to extend. So this is my story. Now that uh, I had the story in my head, uh, it was time to start developing the application itself. But here, it is very important not to fall into like a uh, uh, the trap of writing the perfect application, of taking all our vision and writing it at once. Because even if it is a relatively small vision, this is kind of a path into your application never existing, because you would want to make it as perfect as possible to keep working on it, to keep writing it until it is just right. And this will usually never happen. Um, so I would recommend to start with a draft, really a minimal viable product, something that does not have to be stable, but is just a proof of concept of what you want to do. And then you do the super hard thing of publishing it and telling everyone about it. You need to say, hey, here is my amazing proof of concept. Here is the vision of what, it ha of what I would like it to be. You need to be totally upfront and honest about the level uh, that the application is in right now. Don't try to sell people something you can't stand behind. And then you need to tell them your vision and bring them in on the ground floor. This is very important because this is the time that uh, you will get your early adopters. It is the time that you will get your uh, like allies and your first maintainers. These are the best users, and a lot of people are really looking for things like this to join, things to join on the like uh, uh, at the very beginning and being able to say things like, "I used this application back when it crashed every time I did Control C." Uh, or things like that, uh, you have to give people the opportunity to uh, like go on this journey with you. Um, so when we talk about this like uh, uh, upper level, this user level of the stack, uh, I like to separate it in my mind to three things. First, there is the branding, which is the tone that I use when I talk about the application. Um, then there is the marketing, which is how I found my how I find my users, how I find my audience, and where I look for them. Um, and then there is community management. Once I have users, uh, once people are using my app, how do we keep them around? How do we keep them happy? Uh, and how we do we foster a welcoming environment for them? Uh, so drilling down about the uh, uh, like starting with the branding um, here this really is uh, uh, more uh, on the side of how I like to do things and how I think the right way to do them uh, them is there are a lot of ways to do this I will not map them out right now but I tell I'll tell you what I try to do um, I think it's very important to be kind honest and consistent there is uh, like this tendency or this thought, especially uh, uh, with the advent of social media, that we need to be contrarian, we need to like uh, um, be mean to people and anger them because that will create engagement for us. 
While this is sometimes technically true, I think this is very much counterproductive. You will not win any friends in this way, and you want to have allies for the long term. You want people to kind of join you and like see that you are a nice person and that they want and make them want to work with you and for your project to succeed. So first, be kind. There is enough negativity in the world. Uh, I prefer to add positivity rather than adding to this negativity in, in general, regardless of like the self-interest that is very clear here. Uh, as I mentioned before, be honest. Um, like it's important to use positive language and tell people how awesome your app is, but don't lie to them. Don't tell them things that are not true. If you're talking about the vision, tell them that this does not exist yet and you plan to do it in the future. Um, and then what is, in my opinion, not only part of the branding, but also a very important internal resource is be consistent. Keep coming back, keep improving the application. The answer to negativity, the answer to all the bad reviews and uh, 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 people telling you that you are reinventing the wheel and like not being on the same page with you on, with, on the vision and all of that is to keep coming back and keep improving the application. Once we have established the tone, we need to find out how where to use it. Um, so you need to find your audience and uh, you need to like give this message to people who want to hear it people who will be interested in your project whether as like fellow maintainers or uh, as users don't shove it down their throats like don't go for quantity over quality it will be it, it will go against you in the end um an example from Zellage is since my audience is terminal developers, I went to various subreddits that uh, uh, cater to such developers, like uh, whether they are about Vim, NeoVim, terminals, Rust, Linux, anything like that. Um, also various forums, various places in social media, like the internet is a big place, uh, find where you are your audience congregates. Uh, super, super important is to follow the rules of the uh, various places you publish into the letter. Um, I also like to go a step further and to uh, private message the admins of the various forums and ask permission in order to post about my project. Um, when you communicate about the project, uh, you kind of have to do a dance of both communicating to your existing users and to your future ones. Uh, communicating to your existing users is saying things like, um, hey, here are all the bug fixes, like all the things that uh, everyone wanted uh, uh, fixed, here they are. Please be concise about this. Don't write every small change, like I change this line in the readme and, uh, 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 and such. Write things that have very high user impact. Uh, and then also talk to your new users. I like to do things like uh, when I uh, post about a new Zellage version, I say, uh, hey, new Zellage version is out. Um, Zellage, in case you don't know, is a terminal workspace and multiplexer. And then move on to all the new features, all the bug fixes, uh, tell about new features like things that uh, maybe uh, um, uh, uh, users have been waiting for for a very long time in order to use your application. Um, it's important to remember that these people, if you chose the right places, they want to hear what you have to say. Don't be afraid to say it. Uh, I also like to encourage people to create content on my platform. This can be as fellow maintainers contributing code. This can be giving support on Discord or Matrix. Um, this can be writing blog posts about the application. In Zellage's case, it's also developing plugins. Uh, it was very important to me, or exactly for this reason, to foster a plugin system from the very beginning. Um, if people create content on your platform, then it helps them identify with it. It helps them feel that they own a part of it, that they help this thing come to existence. This means that they will keep coming back and not look for the next cool thing in order to, uh, uh, like, uh, 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 in order to hop onto it. They will want to have your project succeed and be part of it. Um, here I want to read uh, as part of the community man management section, uh, uh, my absolute favorite review of Zellage ever. Um, 
This was posted very shortly after we released our MVP, and as I alluded to before, it really it it was a like it was a train wreck. It crashed in people's faces. Um, uh, it like uh, uh, ruined their machines. Uh, really, I didn't even know if it worked on like on Mac, you know. Uh, and then Alex Payne said, uh, "Zelig is a cool project. It's like what if Tmux had the user interface of Nano and the performance of dog shit." And yes, I have already switched over to it completely. Not joking. Um, so the. Um, the funny thing uh, uh, about this is that I actually reached out to uh, uh, to Alex in order to get permission to use this tweet uh, in the talk. And then uh, Alex told me, yeah, of course you can use it. Uh, and uh, also, um, uh, please just know I am still a Zelig user. I love it very much. And he even, uh, after like I reminded him of this tweet, he posted an update. Uh, and he said, FYI, Zelig still looks like Nano, which is good. But in the time since I wrote this tweet, the performance and config has gotten crazy good. Go install it. Consistency pays off. Keep coming back. Foster your early adopters and uh, uh, like, don't give up. Uh, so more about community management. Other than fostering your early adopters, you need to also foster a welcoming environment and not tolerate intolerance. Um, this is also something uh, we are not usually wired to do as developers, like managing communities, but we absolutely have to. Um, we are the responsible adults in the community. If someone is bullying someone else on our platform or in our issues or uh, in our social media or anything of that sort, we cannot let it slide. We can't say, oh, this is not my problem. I don't care. We have to step in and we have to make it stop happening. Block them if we need to. Don't be afraid. Uh, this helps create a safe environment for people. They, it helps them like coming back and being like feeling free to ask questions and kind of uh, uh, like participate in the community. It is an absolute must. Uh, also reward enthusiasm with authority. If someone makes a lot of pull requests, contributes a lot of code, uh, make them a maintainer. Um, if someone uh, gives a lot of support on Discord or on Matrix, then make them an admin. Uh, I like, um, in, in similar cases, when I'm not sure what to do with a person, I also sometimes like send a DM and say, hey, you've been like uh, um, finding a lot of bugs, opening a lot of issues. I see you really care about the project. Um, if you'd be willing to share your posting address with me, I'd be happy to send you some Zelig stickers. Uh, make these people feel appreciated because like the community is one of the most important parts of your open source project. Finally, uh, some takeaways. Um, when we create an open source project, we have to find our own users. No one will do it for us. We have to be real full stack developers. Um, I think this is an opportunity and it will help us grow. Consistency is our most important internal resource. We have to keep coming back. We have to keep like uh, uh, keep at it, keep doing the thing. And even when everyone tells us, no, this is bad, I will never use it. Uh, you should feel bad about putting this out. Ignore them. This is not about you. This is about them. They are not your users. Keep doing what you're doing and don't let them discourage you. Then we have uh, honesty and kindness, which are our most important external resource. Um, they help us inspire others. They make others want to work with us. Um, and also, as I mentioned before, try to add positivity to the world rather than add negativity. Don't answer negativity with negativity. Just don't answer if you have to. You don't have to answer anyone. Uh, and like with everything, the magic happens outside of our comfort zone. When we step out of it, when we do the scary things, when we talk about our work, we grow as developers. If you have a project that is like uh, um, rotting and like no one is using it, please talk about it. Don't let it die. You are the really only one who can do this project. This is your project. Like uh, um, go and please make fantastic software and don't give up on it. Thank you very much. Wow. I will take wow. your questions now.
That was an amazing, and I want everyone to know on the call, I did not pay Aram to do any of this, right? So I just want to make sure that he came on his own accord, but that was an amazing presentation, um, near and dear to my heart and what I do here at Sousa. Um, I will kick off the question because I have one. As I'm in the DevRel space, how does an open source project itself attract people in that DevRel space, do you focus on that to try to get someone to just be a little more engaging and active in your projects? Um, sometimes in a few ways, yes. Uh, we have a, a social media manager, mm -hmm. like a, a specific a specific person. That's what they do on the project. They uh, they manage our social media account because they are much better at it than me. They are like a witty person uh, who engages with people and uh, and and yeah. Um, but I can't say I looked out for them. They just came to me. Um, generally. Um, most of my mode with Zellage is overwhelmed. There, it is a huge project. It has a lot of like uh, users and people engaging with it and such. I cannot do everything, um, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of things. Like if someone steps up, I'm like, amazing. Yes, please do this. But that's usually how it happens. Awesome. I'm looking at the chat here. Any other questions? Because I can talk to Aram all day about this stuff. This is near and dear to my heart. All right. Well, I guess that. Oh, Dan, please. Um, so you mentioned you do this full time. What? Uh, why did you? Uh, or let's let's put it like that. At which point uh, did you decide this is what I'm gonna do? And what was exactly the reason? Because I mean, I not in any way. Uh, I don't maintain anything that's remotely as popular enough. But even if I did, I'm not sure at which point I would personally think I want to do this full time, and I feel confident that I can do that. So I'm just curious what made you. Uh, what was the what was the thing that made you push go for it? Um. Uh, yeah. Good question. So. Um, I actually uh, um, quit a job uh, a little bit before I started Zelich. Uh, at that point, I had like some of my other projects were starting to being to be successful, and those projects were mostly about um, uh, like trying to see uh, if like if I can make uh, uh, like an application, uh, an open source application that people will use. Uh, I didn't like I didn't really direct or have a story about them behind um, before. Uh, then, when I thought about uh, uh, like uh, um, the skills I have learned in the open source world, I thought to myself, okay, what do I really want to exist? What do I want to bring into existence? And this is how Zellage came to be. Um, at that point, I decided, OK, I'm going to try this for a few months, see if it works out, if I get some traction, if people come uh, come along. And if so, I'll continue. And it has. Um, I have, uh, like, I, I have like periodic goals for myself every time. And I think, OK, if I meet this goal, I'm going to continue. If I meet that goal, I'm going to continue for another year, another two years. And so far, I've met all my goals, I'm happy to say. So uh, it's kind of been an ongoing thing. I'd like to bring Andy on. Andy, uh, your question is very similar to Dan's, um, but I think it's like just slightly off. You want to ask it? Yeah, sure. Just a little bit different. But you know, there's a moment between starting the project and then realizing you should keep going with the project. I've abandoned so many open source projects. I feel super guilty. But what is the moment for you when you thought this is this is time to you know go full speed ahead? Um, I, I always knew. Ah, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like th this project is my uh, I, I call it my magnum opus. It's my great work. Uh, I, I feel it's what I give to the world. Um, I, I, I deeply want it to exist, and so I keep on going with it, and I keep getting the feedback that people like it, so I want to like keep going. Love it. Awesome. Dirk, you had a question, please. Yeah, Aaron, so uh, thank you for the presentation. Really, really down to my heart as well. Um, how can we give you some support? Right? So what can we do for you? Um, so, um, as I mentioned, I do this full time. 
and uh, I have no other income. I have a GitHub sponsors, which uh, helps me pay my bills, but uh, it is, I still don't see it as sustainable. So uh, if you are able and like what I'm doing and would like to give me financial support, that would be great. I intentionally actually did not put it in the slides because I didn't want this presentation to be about me. But um, like, uh, uh, if you if you care and want to, I can like uh, I, I can place the link in the chat. One second. Yep, please do that. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Any more questions? Have I missed any in the chat? Let me see. I believe so. Okay. Ah, yes, someone met. <laughs> Maybe we should just mention people that are uh, that congrat uh, that compliment your website and Zellich and that it looks awesome. So yeah. just so that it, it it's not a question, but I think it's important. That's very kind. You definitely, Thank have, you. You definitely have users here in in the network and at Susan. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That's great to hear. Happy users. Best users. All right. Well, Aram, thank you very much. We do appreciate it. If you see the sponsor link here, um, we'll also put a link to the website if we haven't already in the chat. Um, so everyone can check that out after the show.